Hi, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK. If it's the first time you're visiting my channel, please subscribe, like and share. Um, there is a bit of disturbance next door. I guess it's a beautiful day, so everybody's out in their gardens using their lawn mowers and goodness knows what else. But hopefully what I have to say will not distract for, will not distract you from the noise that's going on next door. Now, I heard about Richard Stewart, who died um, last week. We're in June. Um, symbolically, it's the Windrush. It's the year of the Windrush celebrations. And it's such a shame that he was misdiagnosed as an illegal immigrant. They haven't got the cause of death. His son seems to think it was due to the stress of losing everything, his job, his home, and just made destitute and just trying and even though they sorted out his um his paperwork he still couldn't get no compensation after losing so much to go and see his mother's grave before he died so that is a very sad beginning of this um video um that somebody has to die before they receive the compensation that caused them the devastation and the depression in the first place. Now, um, what I wanted to say is misclassification of an illegal immigrant, it has wide connotations. People might just think, okay, they've called them an Ill illegal immigrant, so what, they can fix it. But the thing is, is that when somebody is misclassified as an illegal immigrant, it means loss of job, loss of benefits, no access to health care, loss of home. It means destitution. You can't get a driving license. It means a breakdown of the relationships through stress. Can you imagine you don't know where your next money is coming from? You don't know what's happening depression and then the threat of deportation of your head detention people being put into these detention centers exile and as in richard stewart's case death that is what the misclassification of an illegal immigrant means so we have to you know it's fine they're saying oh yes we're going to give you money for this and money for that but it doesn't take away the sense of loss and, you know, the lack of empowerment, the lack of everything that you need in order to survive. Similar with the Grenfell Tower, you know, there's a lot of those people are still waiting compensation. And sadly, there's people who have not, who should not have been awarded compensation, who have been awarded compensation and who are doing time for it. I don't know how anyone could want to exploit that kind of situation. Just shows you the mind, what's happened to the mind of people today, that they would do something like that. Anyway, that's not, I'm not talking about Grenfell Tower today. I'm talking about these people here. In June 1948, Empire Windrush carried 492 passengers from the Caribbean, which started in multicultural Britain. Um, bef before that, um, the, in the um, inference here is that Britain was white. It was never white. The fact that people had separated and gone back to the land and the countries where there's heat and warm and sun and food doesn't take away from the fact that Britain always had black people from the beginning of time. Now, um, the thing is, is that what is interesting is that 492 is what they claimed caused this mass immigration problem. I don't understand how 492 individuals could cause such a wide explosion. They can't do that by themselves. They have to do that with the help of the government in whichever way, whether it was extending a hand to um, their families, whether it was opening up the ports and the doors to other people for jobs or for whatever other reason, the government had a hand in it. The Windrush people didn't do it by themselves. You, that 492 people didn't come here and all of a sudden it's, it's, it's gone into the millions. It doesn't work like that. It takes cooperation and participation. Um, the one million in funding has now been earmarked for the Ministry of Housing Committees and local government for a permanent monument at London's Waterloo Station. 
I mean, what's a monument going to do? England is so hell-bent on monuments, architecture, artefacts. What do they do? Do they, do they, you know, is the idolatry of all these things taking over human nature? That you think that, this, you know, to symbolise what's happened to the Windrush generation, you can solve it all by putting up a monument. Yes, that's nice. It's welcoming. We love the look of it. It probably look very, very beautiful. But what has it cost the people for whom it represents? What does it cost to them? And in years to come, history down the line, will the future generations be told what lives were lost and what lives were damaged because of that menu monument? I'm sure the Home Office are not going to have it written in history. And they misclassified Windrush generations. And so they ended up destitute, without jobs, on the street, unable to, you know, some people, you know, some people um, dying, being deported, being detained, wrongfully detained. That's not, I bet that's not going to go down in history. The same way the truth of slavery never went down in history. It's going to be all glossed up. Oh, the Windrush generation came over here and built the country and we built up this beautiful monument to, to commemorate them. Who's going to know generations down the line the truth? If, if the government has anything to do with it, nobody will know. Just like when we see all these monuments from, from time immemorial, we do not know what people went through in order for those monuments to be created. Um, what else was I going to say? They're also doing a monument, of course, for Grenfell Tower. Does that compensate for the amount of lives lost? It doesn't. So everybody, every time we look at that tower, what is that going to do for all those people who lost their loved ones? Theresa May said, the monument will be a lasting legacy to the tremendous contribution the Windrush generation and their children made to our great country. If that's the case, why do you pay them back with a hostile environment policy, if that is your truth? How do the two match? Do your words match your actions? No, they don't. So now you're going to stick up a monument, even though you've got this hostile environment in place, since 2012 when she was Home Secretary. It's not right and it's not fair. You know, to think that you can just stick up a monument and also she's giving 500,000 to commemorate, you know, for people to celebrate the Windrush because apparently it was in June 1948 that the Empire Windrush came came to the to the UK. We're in June now, so five hundred thousand is being given normally to the funders who always get it and who normally recycle what information and materials they have and pocket the rest, some of them. I'm not saying all of them. But you know, it's almost like it's silence money. I mean it is meant to show as an apology and as a as a as a token to show look, okay, we're sorry about this. So here's 500,000. So, but what they're really saying is you, you take this 500,000, go and drink it, do whatever you want with it. Drink, spend food on it, spend it all, blow it all. Because that's what black people usually do with money. They don't do anything sensible with it. That's in the minds of certain people. So we'll give them 500,000. That'll keep them quiet. They can go and have a little party. They can go and have a little dance. And that'll shut them up a little bit. And that eases their conscience. Meanwhile, the black people who get the 500,000, they do their little events, they feel quite happy and, you know, they, they feel as though they're um, talking about Windrush. But what about the people? The people are still waiting for their, for their um, citizenship and their naturalisation and who don't have the 1,200 to pay for it. And just because they haven't got all the paperwork, they're being denied. Not that they're not legitimately entitled to it, but they're being denied because of certain bureaucracy. And then you have people on the other end spending money and having a big party about Windrush. I refuse to support it. 
because it's not doing anything for the people who need that £500,000. It's not doing anything for them. And something needs to be done. I don't know what, but I'm sure that then these people must be somewhere. And instead of going and blowing it on, on a you know, celebrating Windrush, make some food parcels or something. Or offer to pay their rent or something. I don't know. But there has to be something that can be done for these people who have worked in the country all their lives, paid taxes, and now because of a, you know, a course of misjustice, because of, a, you know, a glitch in the system and lack of knowledge, these people have been deprived and made destitute. So that 500,000, thank you, but use it, those people who are still out there waiting for compensation, need money. So it's not for us who already have a job who are okay to be spending that money and celebrating Windrush. It's not for that. Somebody, and I hope somebody's out, you know, I don't mind if somebody's out there documenting this story and from the mouths and the hands of um, the people who matter and the people who've experienced it and giving them something in return, then that's fine. They'd be better off doing something like that if that's not already being done. But, you know, it's no point just having these events all over the UK, celebrating Windrush and reminding people. People know what Windrush is. It's been, it's been on the news. It's been everywhere for the past year or so because of the atrocities that has happened to the Windrush um, generation. So we need something hands-on. Um, what else would I say? I also said, um, in generations to come, will the truth be told of what the statues represent? Or will it be glossed over like so much of our history? Will the children of the future be told of the Home Office cock-up that misclassified legal migrants, the, that misclassified legal migrants were classified as illegal immigrants, that these same people were abused, made homeless, detained, deported, ridiculed, biasly treated, made destitute. Ah, it's so, it's so unfair and so sad. Karen Doyle, National Organisation of Windrush Pressure Group Movement for Justice said, memorialising the arrival and contribution of the Windrush generation is important and welcome. However, a gesture in bronze and steel feels empty and meaningless from a government that championed the hostile environment policy, bringing destitution, detention, deportation, exile and death to this important generation. So that is very well put. I mean, those statues are beautiful. I, I went through King's Cross St Pancras and there's a 10 foot um, bronze statue. Oh, it's called The Lovers. It's at the meeting place. It's absolutely phenomenal. And yes, they look beautiful. And I can imagine how much time and labour. But make sure the people who you are commemorating have been put right. Their situation has been resolved. Then you put up the statue and you say, this is because we have done A, B, C, D to, you know, to, in order to, re for restitution of these people, you know, to put things right. But don't stick it up there and people are still starving and lost their homes because they were wrongfully diagnosed wrongfully misclassified as illegal immigrants, losing jobs they'd been in for years. 370,000 is being offered for legal support to secure their immigration status. But that's a challenging process. 300, that 370,000, that's fine. They are going to need specialist intervention for this. 45 pages in the guidance note that people have to read and understand. And the thing is, is that there's so much bureaucracy, complex systems, unreasonable evidential demands. And without specialist intervention or oversight, you know, 
a lot of these people aren't going to stand a chance. A lot of the um, Windrush generation, especially the elderly, they were they didn't come over with a high education because it wasn't a priority, or it, because of colonialism, you know, the priorities were different for those families. So a lot of them, they can't go through 45 pages of, of um, complex wording. And then, you know, uh, you know, and to get out of it, they're trying to find out who married who and whether or not they got here based on marriage or whether or not they got how they came into the country. They're still the Windrush generation. They're still entitled under the 1948 British Nationality Act to live in the country. The fact that they kind of changed it halfway, moved the goalpost halfway through the process is neither here nor there. Certain people, the Windrush generation, were entitled to be in the UK because they were legitimate British citizens. So all you people out there who are saying, go back to your bloody country, it's not that easy. It's not that easy. Because at one point, we were one under one rule. We were all British. The fact that Jamaica and a lot of the islands went independent in 1968 made a difference. But at the time that they came to the country, to the UK, they were British citizens. Um, what else did I want to say? Um, so so many they're still fearing deportation because they haven't got they haven't got all the evidence. A lot of them, well, a few, well, I don't know if a lot. I don't know how many are legitimate. But they just don't have the evidence. Um, Five hundred thousand. I've said about that. Um, what else? Six thousand four hundred people have been given documents confirming they are legally entitled to live in the UK, but only thirteen have given payments from the Emergency Hardship Fund, set up to help those facing extreme hardship and financial difficulties as a result of losing their jobs, homes, access to health care benefits etc after being misclassified as illegal immigrants thing is 6400 people have been affected by this misclassification and yet only 13 and i bet those 13 are people who could afford a lawyer i bet it's not your regular john joe going in there and saying look you know i'm legally here i'm legally entitled to be here i bet it's not one of those People who have managed to access funding to get a lawyer. I bet that's why it's only 13. Might be wrong, but hey, I'm entitled to my opinion, as you know. Um, but I was, I put my little notation here. What, what better way to weaken the black infrastructure? You've destabilising the middle class by doing this Windrush. I mean, the Windrush generation were the strongest generation. They're the ones who bought homes, paid off for their homes, mortgage-free, paid into the system, jobs from the time they came into the country till they retired. These are the Windrush generation. And so when you block them and you take away everything that they've earned and everything that they've done, you are destabilising the middle class because they are the affluent, they were the affluent blacks of Britain. The young people now, they can't, regardless of race, they can't afford to buy their own home, let alone pay off for it, unless they've got rich parents. So these were, these were the foundation, they paid into the system more than any other generation. And this is how they're paid back. Um, and then they build this monument. Government annoy, announced a compensation scheme that could pay out 570 million, but those affected have yet to see a penny of it. They're probably waiting for them to die off, like Richard Stewart. May he rest in eternal peace. And that's all for now.